I hope you enjoyed my short story. I just finished reading her last seven days in Key West. If you would like to check out some more of my writings, look for The Last Ruble, A Story is Born. This is part one of a series I'm working on. The Last Ruble, A Story is Born, offers a journey of adventure, tragedy, drama, and love. This book takes place in current times, plus in the early 1900s, as the times overlap and two men seem to be headed in the same path in life. The first character in The Last Ruble is a man named Jack Rivers who lives in current times. He's a struggling off-Wall Street investment banker. Jack travels the world chasing the money. Luxembourg, Paris, the Cayman Islands, and more. He won't give up. The second main character in this book is a man named Vladimir, who is a Russian warrior who was born in the early 1900s. In this book, one man is hunting and the other man is hiding. I'm going to read a little bit of chapter 9 called The Deal. Uh, Vladimir is involved here. The scene is set in the early 1900s in Russia in a village that's been set up by the king and queen to train the Russian soldiers and their families. Chapter 9, The Deal. On a slow walk to the meeting, Vladimir knew many of the others who were not soldiers would have a hard time dealing with the news forthcoming. He approached the meeting area at the edge of the village. He was joined by the other soldiers. Chapter 9, The Deal. On a slow walk to the meeting, Vladimir knew many of the others who were not soldiers would have a hard time dealing with the news forthcoming. He approached the meeting area at the edge of the village. He was joined by the other soldiers. One of Vladimir's comrades spoke first. Vladimir, yes, replied Vladimir. This is not good. No, it is not, and I fear the worst is to follow. Yes, we've been here before. Yes, Vladimir continued, but many of our fellow men are not soldiers. Vladimir's comrade continued. It will hit them the hardest, Vladimir went on. Yes, it will, and I smell death ahead of us. I smell it too, replied his comrade. Vladimir and the others approached the fire. They could see the general standing on a box so he could see over the crowd. Then, as the group formed a circle around the general, the armed soldiers appeared from the shadows, leaving no way out. The soldiers with Vladimir had never been on the inside of the circle before. They knew the only way out was death. One of the sergeants fired his automatic rifle into the air. When everyone looked at him, he spoke, Attention, comrades. Please pay close attention. Our general has something to say to you. Thank you, Sergeant. Comrades, listen to my words very carefully. Your lives depend upon my instructions being followed to the letter. Life changes. Times change. And many times one is not able to control his future. The fate of Russia has fallen on your shoulders. I will not take up your time with long speeches. I am a soldier, and as a soldier, I follow orders. Many of you are not soldiers, but doctors, craftsmen, and farmers. But everyone was selected to be here tonight for one reason or another. Sometimes one cannot see the honor bestowed upon them, for they become selfish. Now is not the time to become selfish. Not only does your life depend upon it, but the lives of your families. You have been training for a mission to save our homeland, and my job is to make sure each and every one of you does his or her part. The trucks are beginning to arrive as I speak to you and tell you about the next stage of our mission. Anyone trying to escape will be shot, and then we will shoot their families. This is short and simple. Now go. You could hear the disbelief coming from the group of men as the armed soldiers moved in to disperse him, hurrying them on their way. No groups of more than a few men were allowed to form. Vladimir had seen this many times. He spoke to no one, but hurried home as quickly as possible. Vladimir entered his home. His wife spoke first. 
So how long do we have? He responded. I fear not long. She continued. What will become of everyone left behind? Vladimir. I think everyone will be just left to take care of themselves. But I will get you out of here. I will go see the general. We must stay inside for now. I fear there will be death to follow very soon. Many of the men who are not soldiers will try to take their families and leave. The general will not allow this to happen. Summoning Vladimir, his wife spoke. Come sit with me by the fire, my love. The two sat by the fire, close to where their daughter lay sleeping, and the wife continued to speak. Will you wake her before you leave? I am not sure there's time for that. I will spend a few hours just looking into your eyes before I go speak with the general. Not long went by before the predicted gunfire and screams could be heard. They were not far off. Many were trying to escape the net the general had put in place. Vladimir knew this would be impossible. The general had done this before, and Vladimir had been part of it. He and his wife retired to their bedroom as they shared their last night together. The gunfire began to die down. Then Vladimir spoke. I must go see the general. Please do not leave me. I must. What will our lives be without you? Vladimir went on. You will be alive. That is what I promise you. How can you make that promise? I have served the general for many years. He knows I am a man of my word. What word will you give him? With this, Vladimir touched his finger to his wife's lips and spoke. I shall return very shortly. Vladimir approached the fire. He could see the general sitting close to the fire, surrounded by his captains. They were looking at maps. As he got closer, two guards stepped in front of him, stopping his forward movement. What is it you want? Vladimir responded. I wish to speak to the general. The general is busy. Be on your way or you will be shot. Vladimir would not be stopped. He raised his voice. General, my general, I wish to speak to you. It is very important to the mission. The general recognized the voice. Let him pass. As he approached the table, the captain stopped him, searching his body to see if he had weapons. He spoke. I am not here to kill anyone. I wish to speak to the general. Let him pass, came from the general. Yes, comrade, what can I do for you? A moment alone is what I am requesting. I'm busy, comrade. General, I have served this army all my life. The general rose from his chair, walking toward Vladimir, putting his hand on his shoulder, then leading them both out of hearing distance of his captains. Make this good, comrade. I've not spoken to the other soldiers, but I'm sure I can influence them to follow you. You follow or die. I see a long journey ahead of us, and many things can change on long journeys. Even the men in uniform may change. What is your offer? My loyalty to the death with no questions asked. In return, what is it you ask of me? Vladimir went on. Safe passage for my family and any other soldiers who swear the same. The general looked at him. If I do this, then none of the uniformed soldiers must ever know. You have my word, general. Choose no more than a handful. The fewer, the less odds of someone changing their mind. As you wish, general. It will be done as you wish. One more thing, comrade, I must say. Vladimir turned to face the general again. Yes, my general. I will be the only one watching you. If any of those you pick goes against his word, it will be your job to handle any threats which may arise, or I will deal with you directly. Understood? Fully, my general. I fully understand. The general went on. In one hour, there will be a hole in the guard circle on the south end of the village. It will remain open for 20 minutes. Be on your way. Thank you, general. Thank you, my general. You can thank me if we all survive. On his way home, Vladimir made two stops. He knew of four other soldiers in the village he could trust. Telling each of the others to get the other two and meet at his house in ten minutes. No longer. There was no time, he told them. They left for the others without question. They knew Vladimir. Each man was instructed to bring his families and only what the women and children could carry, including food for three days. There was another village within a three-day walking period. They should try to make it there for safety. Once the families had all gathered, Vladimir spoke. The time is short. 
and there will be no discussion on what I'm about to tell you. I've spoken with the general. Your choice is to believe or not to believe the general. I'm going to believe him. I have looked him in the eye. I think anyone left behind in the morning will be executed to cover all tracks. Then Vladimir explained the deal he had made with the general. He looked around the room. Is everyone ready to commit to this agreement? If not, we can stay and fight for our families, but we will all die for sure and only take a few of them with us. We must decide now. Looking around the room, looking not only at the men, but the women and children. As his eyes met each of the others, there was silence with only a nod of approval. Then it's all settled. Say your goodbyes. We take our families out in 15 minutes. Then Vladimir turned to his wife, taking her and his daughter by the hand, leading them to the bedroom. I love you two with all my heart and fear this is the only way to give any of us a fighting chance to survive. Something big is going to happen in our country, and very soon, so be ready. Vladimir's daughters ask, Will I ever see you again, Father? I will not lie to you. I am not sure. I am a soldier and must follow orders. I will always dream of you, Father. And I will always dream of you, my baby girl. With this, he picked up his daughter. It is time to go. He took his family to the front room. It is time to go. There will be no talking, he told the group. He now led his group out the front door. There were about 20 in the group heading to the south end of the village. Approaching the wooded area at the south end of the village, he could see a tall, shadowy figure. He held his hand up, military style, to halt his group. Immediately, the soldiers lay on the ground taking their families with them. Vladimir turned to quietly signal to his followers to stay put. He would venture forth to see who the figure was in the shadows. He rose slowly and began his approach. Many thoughts went through his mind, including did the general change his mind and was going back on his word, or could this just be someone in the wrong place at the wrong time? He approached with extreme caution. He removed a knife from his belt placing it behind his back. He had to be ready for anything. He tried to look around into the dark bushes, but they were too thick to see beyond a few feet. The sky was starless. What I've just read is part of Chapter 9, called The Deal, from my book, The Last Ruble, A Story is Born. If you want to find out more information, you can go to our website at islandjoescoffee.com. And if you make it to the island of Key West, you can pretty much just ask any local, hey, where can I find Island Joe's at? And they should be able to help you. Thank you.